collapsing ear canals. Yeah, that's a real thing. Your ear canal can almost pinch completely shut. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to You Heard It Here with Dr. Gary. I'm Gary, one of the clinical audiologists and part of the ownership team here at Advanced Hearing Group in Scottsdale, Arizona. Today, we're gonna to talk about collapsing ear canals and we're gonna take a look at what it looks like when we do a wax removal on a patient with collapsing ear canals. Let's start off by looking at this first ear. You can see as the curette goes in, it has to be turned sideways to get past the narrowing of the ear canals. And as we press on the ear canal wall, it opens up, or as I pull on the pinna or the outer ear, it completely opens up. When patients have collapsing ear canals, it doesn't take much wax to really affect their hearing, making their ears feel completely full and having a great reduction in the amount of hearing that they can perceive. So what we're gonna do is use the curette to remove this wax, opening up the ears, making them feel more open, and improving the hearing dramatically. Again, here we go, we're gonna pull on the pinna, you're gonna see the ear canal open, and as we put the camera in, it presses that ear canal to the side, and we get a good view of the eardrum. Now we're gonna to jump to this patient's other ear. They have collapsing canals on both sides. This is not always the case. Sometimes people will have one ear canal that's collapsing or very narrow, and one that's much more open and natural. In this case, the patient has collapsing canals on both sides. It's an extreme narrowing and really can cause, again, that hearing problem, but also problems with moisture retention. If you get water in your ear and you have a collapsing ear canal, when that ear canal closes up and that it really narrows down, it can actually hold some of that moisture in place. And as we all know, if you leave moisture in a place that's warm, it can definitely breed some bacteria and can cause some issues with infections. That's not to say that collapsing canals directly cause ear infections. However, collapsing ear canals can absolutely hold water in the ears or other liquid in the ears, depending on what you got in there, and that can cause some infections or other problems with your ears. Again, here as we're pulling this out, we're getting things that are stuck to the ear canal wall. So you do see a little bit of irritation there, but we now have a clear view to the eardrum and this patient has some relief from their hearing loss. We're gonna take a look next at another patient since this is a compilation video and we're gonna really see if they have collapsing canals on both sides. Again, here you're seeing that curette as it goes in and it's actually moving that ear canal wall, opening it up. What's amazing here is this patient had a sudden reduction in hearing. The sudden reduction in hearing was due just to this small amount of earwax that's kind of gluing these two pieces of the ear canal, the two sides, the right and left, together. So as we removed that wax, as soon as we opened up the ear canal and broke through that wall of wax, they experienced an immediate increase in the amount of sound that they could hear. I'm always fascinated by the amount that earwax affects different people. In this patient's case, there was a great effect. And as we look down, you can't see the ear canal at all. We get through there, now we can see the eardrum. We're gonna to jump to this patient's other ear. We're trying to show both ears here. Let's see if this one is just as collapsing. You can see it's much more open. The earwax on this side is a completely different color and texture. This one is a more gooey and a more orangish reddish color. So we're gonna use the curette here, get them all cleaned up, especially since they were suffering from that sudden loss on the opposite side. If you like these wax removal videos and like seeing us clean crud out of people's ears, please like and subscribe. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and helps me get my content in front of more people. Also, if you're suffering from hearing loss or oral fullness, that's fullness or pressure in the ears, remember to contact your hearing health care provider or contact your primary care doctor to find out who they'd recommend in your area. It's really important that we don't ignore our hearing. Coming up in a video soon, we're going to talk about a big study that was done at Johns Hopkins University called the ACHIEVE study. This ACHIEVE study really looks at some of the connections and correlations between untreated hearing loss and age-related cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, and dementia. 
Those are three things that we really want to avoid, obviously, and part of the way that we can mitigate some risk factors is by simply treating our sensory problems. If you have vision loss, make sure you're treating it. Wear your eyeglasses or your contacts. If you have hearing loss, make sure you're wearing your hearing aids. Or if you have a cochlear implant, wear your cochlear implant. Make sure that you're treating these losses. That's how you can help to stimulate the brain and you can improve your overall cognitive function. This has been You Heard It Here with Dr. Gary. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you next time.